Welcome to your Web Studio project. I'm going to show you how to navigate the Web Studio Builder so you can feel comfortable updating content, adding new content, and publishing your website. Now, this video is specifically for users in content mode, which is a streamlined version of the builder that reduces the complexity and focuses on tasks like adding new content and editing existing content. We're going to break this video down into three steps. The first one is how to edit existing content. Then we're going to look at adding new content to the website. And finally, we're going to optionally publish the website depending on if our permissions allow it. Let's dive into the Web Studio Builder. OK, we are in the Web Studio Builder, and we can start editing content right away. I'm just scrolling on the canvas, this middle part. And if I ever see something I want to change, I can just click in there, modify the content, and click out. And we're done. It's as easy as that. And we can do this anywhere on the site. We want to update paragraph text, button text. We can even change out images by clicking on an image. And on the right hand side, we're going to see the options we have available here. We can click this button to either select a different image, or we can upload a new image right here by clicking upload and selecting the file. When we do change out an image, just be sure to fill out this alt text field describing whatever's in the image. This is to make your website accessible to people who have vision impairment. So for this one, I would just say it's company's logo. Similar to how images show the available settings on the right side, links have that too. So if I were going to link some text, I can highlight it and I get some formatting options right here, such as bold, italics, and I've got link. Now with link, we can see on the right hand side, I'm able to type in my link. If it's an external website, paste it in right here. But if you're linking to another page on your website, then you can click the second button page. And here you can select your existing pages on your website. Let's link it to pricing. Editing existing content is as easy as clicking, typing, and you're done. Next, let's look at adding new content to the website. So I'm on my homepage right now, and I can see that I can't add any new content to the homepage. I know this because in this navigator right here, this is empty. I'm going to switch pages by going to the Pages button here and selecting my About page. Now I'm going to see this in the navigator. This indicates to me that these are areas on the website I'm able to add new content. These areas are determined by the designer or developer, whoever gave you access to the website. They set these up for us to edit. So I'm going to click team member and see that we have two team members right here. Now we're going to have team members joining our company and leaving our company. So we need to keep it up to date. I can do this by adding new content and deleting existing content because they are available in content block. When I hover over one of these, we can see I get a plus button. I'm going to click this and available here are the templates that the designer has provided me. I just see one of them right now because team members, the only thing that makes sense to add here, I'm going to click it. And now we see a team member added. I can always swap out the image by going over here, clicking the button, clicking upload and uploading my image and selecting it when I'm done. And of course, I'm going to say that this is, um, we'll say, picture of Emily or whatever. And I can change out the content right here by saying this is Emily and keep going forward with that. And if Alex unfortunately leaves the company, I can click on Alex and click delete or backspace on your keyboard. You can also hover over the plus button. And if you're holding alt slash option, you'll be able to get a delete button and delete that way. But actually, I want to undo that. So I'm going to do command Z or control Z if you are on a Windows computer. Now, these two content blocks are different. This first one is having these two team members already in there, meaning I have the ability to delete them. This other content block right here doesn't have any of the existing announcements available in it. So I can't delete these ones. If I go up here and hit delete, it'll let me know I can't delete this. But I can add new content. So I can go over here and whenever I want to add a new timeline, I can click this, add it, and I'm good to go. If you ever need access to a different part of the website and you say, actually, I do need to delete some of these or I want to be able to uh, add you know, a new box right here on my own, go to your designer or developer and they can add this for you. It's all configured by them. And that's it for adding new content. Now, as we added that new content, the changes get saved in real time. You don't need to click a save button. However, the changes aren't available on that live website yet until we click publish. It allows us to keep it in like a draft mode, save it into the editor. And then once all of our changes are ready to go, we click the publish button. Now, the designer developer can optionally share the permission to 
let you publish it. So if the publish button up here is green, that means you can publish. Otherwise, it may be this disabled gray color right here. So once I'm good to go, I'm going to go and click publish, assuming I have the permissions, and I'm going to click publish once more right here. Now, publishing takes about 45 seconds, so we'll just need to be patient as this loader indicates that it's still currently publishing. Okay, it's done publishing. I'm gonna click the arrow to open my website or you can navigate directly to the, the URL that you already have. And I'm gonna to go to our about page. I'm gonna scroll down and I can see that we have this extra announcement we added right here. And we also have Emily's picture added. And that's it for publishing our website. So now we can see how easy it is to step into our website, edit any existing content by just clicking in there, making changes, and that's it. We could even add new content to designer specified regions called the content block, as we did with team members and announcements. And once we were good to go with all of our changes, we published the website. And that's it for making changes to your Web Studio project. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.